I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. Yeah, it's been about a year. About one year ago, mid-September in Norman, Oklahoma, halftime, Ohio State was beating Oklahoma 35-17, and that thought kept echoing in my head. My Sooners were getting their asses whipped by a bunch of gosh dang Buckeyes. And Ohio State, they, they won it 45-24 in all honesty. In that fourth quarter, Ohio State probably took it easy on the Crimson and Cream. The Buckeyes, of course, would go on to an 11-1 regular season record, three wins against double-digit winning teams, my Sooners, as well as Wisconsin and Michigan, and that was more than enough to get a number three seed into the college football playoff, despite losing at Penn State against the eventual Big Ten champions. In the end, it didn't matter that Ohio State didn't win the Big Ten because they got the big prize anyway, a trip to the CFP. Of course, they lost in the semis to eventual champion Clemson. Entering this year, though, Urban Meyer has the opposite situation of personnel as far as players. He returns most of them, 15 of the 22. Remember last year, he entered the season with only six of the 22 back. Many of those departures were NFL bound. And, of course, this year they had quite a few players also picked in the draft. But, again, this Ohio State team is going to be more experienced than the one they had the year before. And this year they made a, you know, a couple of uh, offensive changes, at least a couple in the personnel. The biggest one was Kevin Wilson who's now the new offensive coordinator, and people around Sooners certainly know who he is, you know, offensive coordinator of those OU teams um, in the late 2000s, including that 08 team with Sam Bradford, that 08 team setting both yardage and scoring records. And, you know, for the last few years was the head man at Indiana, and late in Wilson's career got the Hoosiers, a basketball school, into bowl eligibility. So he did a nice job there, predominantly with passing. Now, big question I'm sure a lot of people have, Will Ohio State be throwing a lot more than running? Remember last year they didn't always bring it when it came to the passing attack. They did come with it with the rushing attack, you know, leading the Big Ten in rushing with 245 per game. But will they throw a lot more than running? Don't be kidding, okay? Be serious. This is Ohio State. This is Urban Meyer. One is an Urban Meyer team in the Florida or Ohio State eras where he coached, been known for predominantly throwing. That's exactly right. It's going to be run and run first. And by the way, he's got a very experienced offensive line back, everybody except for one. And with three of your receivers needing replaced, I can't see Ohio State um, making the pass the ultimate selection over the run. Now, they'll pass a little bit more, but again, it's going to be run and run first. And why not? Again, that's where Ohio State's strength lies. But I do think Kevin Wilson, seeing how good of a assistant coach he's been and how well he's worked with offensive lines in the past, I think he'll specialize in that. And you do bring a quarterback coach in as well in Ryan Day with NFL QB coaching experience. I think that will really help JT Barrett, who last season, QB rating for the first 10 games was off the charts, 150. But the last three games, Michigan State, as well as Michigan and Clemson, the playoff game, Barrett's QB rating was nearly cut in half to only 80. As far as running the ball, he's a threat. He ran for almost 750 yards a year ago and 11 running touchdowns. And then you look at his passing attack, about 2,600 yards, a strong arm, but not always consistent. But he did throw for only seven interceptions and threw for 24 touchdowns. And, yes, he is an early season Heisman Trophy candidate, but the completion percentage um, will have to get better, and that's where a guy like Ryan Day could really help out in that capacity. The running game, if healthy, is once again going to be effective. That's a big question for sophomore Mike Weber, who last year was a freshman, he shined with over 1,000 yards on the ground and nine touchdowns, but he's had a problem with the hamstring so far in August. In fact, it has pretty much put him in park in terms of uh, full contact and scrimmages, and you know, you hope as a Buckeye fan he's ready to go for that season opener, which happens to be against the Hoosiers, um, which happens to be the Big Ten opener as well. The backup, J.K. Dobbins, could get a lot of PT. Um, he's just a freshman. As far as receivers, well, they lost some good ones in this regard, including Curtis Samuel, the H-back. He was a valuable receiver, but also, too, was known for running the ball, two out of the backfield. And you also lose that wideout Noah Brown. Dontre Wilson's gone, too. So the new crop of receivers, these guys last year only combined, get this, for 28 catches. And they don't have a receiver returning who had more than 300 yards receiving. So this bears watching as the season progresses. Paris Campbell, probably the best of the bunch, had 13 catches a year ago, junior. And he also returned Benjamin Victor and Terry McLaurin. The tight end, well, he's got playing experience as well with uh, Marcus Baugh 
a guy who's been there uh, since 2013, but has had some uh, shoulder issues. In fact, had off-season shoulder surgery. The four of the five down linemen returned for Ohio State, as we mentioned. The ground attack, that was the forte of the team with nearly 250 yards on the ground per game, which was 11th in the country. Billy Price, their all-everything guard, will now move to the center spot where they have to replace the only starter that they lost, who was the number one center, by the way, in the country last year in Pat Elfline. And then the tackle position on the left side, Jamarcus Jones, second team, all Big Ten. And at the... Right tackle position, you've got um, Isaiah Prince, a junior, 26 um, times that he's seen action in the past and 13 starts from last year, started all 13 games. Left guard, Michael Jordan. No kidding, Michael Jordan. But he doesn't wear 23, he wears number 73. A sophomore, made the freshman All-American team a year ago. And the only non-full-time starter back for OSU, right guard, you've got Matthew Burrell, who did, by the way, play in all 13 games last year. He just didn't start. So there's a lot of experience on that offensive line. It's one of the best in the country, if not the best, up there with Alabama and Oklahoma. Urban Meyer definitely has a lot to look forward to in 2017, including a defense whose front seven might be the best in college football. We're turning virtually everybody. Remember last year defensively, they gave up less than 300 yards per contest. Okay, Second in the Big Ten and sixth nationwide. You got the entire starting four back. And Greg Schiano, the defensive coordinator, says that this D-line is the most talented he's ever coached. And remember, Schiano coached for a little while with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The two defensive ends for OSU back, Taquan Lewis on one side, the senior, Eight sacks a year ago. Wow. And the other defensive tackle, well, Sam Hubbard, he's been known as a good player, a junior who had 46 tackles and three and a half sacks. And working in that rotation, Nick Bosa, remember his older brother, Joey Bosa, a two-time All-American, and now doing pretty good in the NFL. The defensive tackles will see if Tracy Springle is ready to go. Now, Springle uh, only played one game last year, got hurt. So as a freshman last year, it was DeMont Jones who had to step in and started the last 12 games and did a good job. And we will see about the uh, other defensive tackle as far as full-time starter, Michael Hill, who's a senior. But Urban Meyer has suspended him for at least a couple of games. Who knows how long the suspension will definitely last, but uh, they'll be without Michael Hill, a senior, so you could expect uh, Robert uh, Landers to play just a sophomore. Linebackers. You got two of the three full-time starters back. You do have to replace the very talented Raquan McMillan, who was a force up the middle. So now the middle linebacker, moving him to the inside from the outside, is Chris Worley, a senior who started all 13 games last year and had 70 tackles. But you can't forget about Jerome Baker, who had a whopping 83 tackles a year ago and two interceptions. He'll play the weak side. And on the strong linebacker side is Dante Booker, a junior. Um, this is the only non-full-time starter back from a year ago. Uh, played one game last year because of injury, but he has seen action uh, in 23 games overall. So it's not like he's never played before on the collegiate level. Secondary experiences, the biggest amount of loss, but then again the year before they were inexperienced on the defensive side as far as full-time starters. But because of the experience that Marshawn Lattimore, as well as Gary and Conley and Dante uh, Hooker had obtained before they were ready for the full-time starting role last year and all three by the way picked in the first round of this past spring's NFL draft you talk about accolades so we'll see how the new corners do and Denzel Ward who has played in 25 straight games he's a junior the other corner is Damon Arnett who last year as a freshman averaged 28 plays per game so he got a lot of experience as a freshman Looking at the safeties, the only full-time starter back in the secondary is Damon Webb, who is a senior, 57 tackles from him in 2016. And rounding off the secondary for the Buckeyes, you have Eric Smith, um, a veteran who has played in the total of 33 games. So as far as full-time starters, not much there, but in terms of experience, do they have that? Absolutely. And you can see the special teams notations on the bottom of the screen. Notice that they will have um, a new punter. That's because the old one in Cameron Johnston, a Ray Guy finalist, has moved on. And I'm sure Kevin Wilson has to be chuckling. Look at the first two opponents, schools that he used to coach for. 
Of course, Indiana as a head coach, and that happens to be the Big Ten opener at Bloomington. And the second game where he was an offensive coordinator and really earned a huge name as far as being a successful offensive coordinator. Of course, that's the Sooners, a rematch of last year's game, which Ohio State won. And the Laffer, we'll see if my Sooners can get revenge, but it won't be easy. This time they got to play at the horseshoe. And you see the next four games shouldn't be much of a problem. The road game against Nebraska could be a little bit tricky because it's the game before Penn State, the Nebraska game in Lincoln on October 14th. Of course, two weeks to prepare for the defending Big Ten champions, Nittany Lions. We know that last year's game, the block field goal return for a touchdown, still stings if you're an Ohio State fan. But again, the Buckeyes got the last laugh by making the playoff. We'll see this time if Ohio State will need a win over the Nittany Lions to remain in the playoff chase. And don't forget about the Iowa game. It's the week after Penn State that could very well be a letdown game. Iowa's defense won't be that bad. And plus the game's Iowa City. And you see at the end of the season, the maize and blue, Michigan. And remember, even though Michigan on paper looks very inexperienced, this will be the last game of the year. So the Wolverines will have a better feel and identity for their team. And Jim Harbaugh, you never know what to expect from that guy. Vegas win total for Ohio State is at 10 and a half, very high. But Ohio State's got the talent and, of course, Urban Meyer on the sideline to exceed that expectation. I'm going to go with 11 wins. There will be one slip up along the way. Of course, the big thing to really watch for offense is how the receivers, the new crop will do. And, of course, that hamstring that could really be an effect on Mike Weber this year. Secondary, I don't have too much fear about them because they do have playing experience, just not starting experience. And the front seven for the Buckeyes, probably the best in the land. I look for the Buckeyes to win the East Division and to face Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game. I will have my college football playoff preview show coming up very late August, and that's when I'll pick the four teams who will go to the playoff, including the Big Ten championship winner. That's my look at the Buckeyes. We'll see you next time.